you can see this patron has some bills that are displaying. So let's take a look at these. And we may want to make some changes to our default columns. So we'll go to Manage Columns, sort everything that's already checked to the top. Some of these are more useful than others. Um, in the billing screen, you may not need the call number. You may not need the bill number. Sometimes that's useful, but not always. Um, balance owed is important because the balance owed may be lower than the original billing amount. So you want to be sure to pay attention to that field. Owning library is sometimes useful if you're not the library that billed the patron. You may also want something like the last billing note, last payment note. And we'll sort those again. And we'll save our columns. You can always hover if uh, some of the information is obscured because you have a lot of columns. If you hover over it, it will show you the full information in that column. So you can see the total billed is a dollar, the total paid is zero, and the balance owed is a dollar. So don't just look at your total billed column, you also want to look at your balance column. For instance, let's say the patron comes in and wants to make a payment on the $6.99 bill for a lost item. We can check that box to show we're making a payment on that amount. And you'll go up to your pay bills option. Cash is the default, but there are other payment types. Check, credit card, patron credit, work, forgive, and goods. Some of these uh, libraries use occasionally. Goods is sometimes used by libraries when they're having food for fines where patrons can bring in food items to have uh, some of their fines reduced. Forgive is most often used when a library has legitimately billed for an item. Uh, so for instance, this lost item for $6.99, the patron reported it lost and the staff marked it lost. But let's say that the patron lost the book in a house fire and the library doesn't want to bill the patron for that item since, you know, it was kind of a tragic circumstance. Well, the library may want to do a forgive payment instead of requiring the patron to pay this, this amount. So we could choose to forgive this amount. You can see payments received has an up or down arrow. So if it's a flat dollar amount, you can choose that, but you can also type into this field. So let's say I was going to forgive the $6.99. I can apply that payment directly, or if I want to make a note, and that's always a good idea with forgive payments to give more details to staff who may be looking at this in the future. If I click annotate and apply payment, it will ask me to put a note. I could say patron's house burned down, no charge for book, and click OK. Sometimes annotations may require initials depending on library settings. Now you can see that $6.99 disappeared from my total bills, but it will show in my billing history. If I click on history and payments, you'll see this forgive payment that I made for this item. And the note is here. If we go back to our bill screen, you can see that it's been reduced to $2.50. Let's say the patron wants to make a cash payment for this bill. I can put in 50 cents. That's what the patron wanted to give me. If I leave annotate checked, it will require a note. I can uncheck it and apply my payment. And now you can see 
total paid is 50 cents, total billed is $1.50, and the balance due is a dollar. Now if staff determine later that this bill should not have been charged to the patron and they want to void that billing, they can check the box, go to the Actions menu, and if they choose Void All Billings, that is actually going to void the $1.50, not the dollar that is remaining. So you do want to be careful when you're using Void because it will void the total build and any payments that have been made will show up as a negative balance. And you see it does pop up with a note to tell me that it's voiding a dollar fifty, not the dollar that is my balance. But if I click OK, then it now shows that I have a negative balance here of fifty cents. So you do want to be very careful with voiding. That can cause problems later for staff to try to resolve. Additionally, it is often a problem to void billing when an item is still checked out. It's better to resolve billing by voids when the item has been checked in, if possible, because more fines may accrue, and so you want to be sure to solve the total problem rather than creating a new one. And so let's say for this dollar, my patron wants to write a check, uh, just so that you can see that interface. So if I click check, the check number option comes up. I can type in my patron's check number, the payment received. I can either type or use my up or down arrows. And if I click Apply Payment, then that dollar has come off the patron account. If I go to History and Payments, I will see the various payments that I have made today. And the amounts are here. And again, you can arrange these columns as you would like. Some fields allow you to drag and drop, and some do not. Let's take a look at the billing summary at the top. After we've made some of these changes, you can see that I have this uh, negative balance here for the minus 50 cents, and it shows as a refund available to my patron. So again, this is something that you want to be wary of, of doing uh, accidentally by voiding items. So what I might need to do to solve this problem is to check this item in if I have it in hand and then I can adjust the billing. So you can see I've checked this item in which means that it's now safe to resolve this billing. I can go to the Actions menu and adjust to zero. What this will do is adjust the billing so that the 50 cents is no longer showing as a negative balance. This is something that you should use very infrequently and cautiously. Now when I go to my billing history and payments, the payment type for this item is account adjustment. And for any billing that uh, you have in Evergreen, you can always look at the full details. And I highly recommend using this screen very frequently because it helps to uh, let you figure out what happened with the billing. So there's a lot of information here about when the bill start, started and finished, uh, what the total bill was, what the total paid in credit was, and then there are statements here about what happened. So there was a manual adjustment of a dollar, a void of a dollar fifty, and that's where my negative balance occurred. And also go to the details screen, which shows you individual transactions. 
So I've added some overdue finds to my patron account, and I also want to add a billing to this patron account. So sometimes you have to bill the patron for a replacement card or maybe a spine label was missing from the item and you're going to bill the patron for uh, the repair, then you'll click on bill patron. And you may have more options in your list other than miscellaneous. Some libraries have established categories like replacement card, print or fax, copies, or other criteria that you might be billing the patron for. So in this case, I'm going to bill my patron a dollar. I can put that information in or I can use the up or down arrow. Then I can put a note. Now, if you use a replacement card category, you might not need this extra note, but since I'm using miscellaneous, I want to tell anyone who's running a report later what this bill was for. The patron may also question the bill, so it's very important to make clear what you're billing the patron for. When I click Submit Bill, the new billing is here. Any automated billing that Evergreen does will have a specific type listed here, but manual billing will have a type of grocery. Now again, if the patron wants to go ahead and pay for all these fines and bills, we can check the box to pay all and then list the specific payment amount. So you can see the total owed here and total billed is $1.35, so staff don't have to do the math. Oops. If you're entering an amount by hand, you do want to be sure to enter the decimal point because otherwise Evergreen is going to think you owe the patron $133.65. So I'm going to make sure it's $1.35 and the pending change is zero and apply my payment. If, for example, you are going to waive any of the fines listed, be sure you're not using cash to do that. You would want to use forgive and waive fines that way because otherwise, if the library is trying to reconcile cash payments with a cash drawer, Using cash for situations where you're not actually receiving money from the patron can cause a problem. It can also cause a problem in the full detail screen that we looked at before. So if we look at our payments for, let's say, this $1 that we just billed, and we click on full details, we're going to see that the amount billed was a dollar and the amount paid was a dollar, and you want everything that shows as a payment in cash to actually have come from the patron. When you're making a payment and the patron says in advance that they want a receipt, you can check receipt on payment. And once you ring up that payment, the receipt will print out for your patron. But if they don't tell you until afterwards, you can go to history and under transactions, Let's say you only want to print out a receipt for the payments that the patron made today. You would look for the finish date. So today is 5-6. And I would highlight those three. Go to the Actions menu and Print Bills. And it will show the bill, but also the payment. 